So mantle cell lymphoma, I did the, the education session this morning here, uh, and I think there's a very definite shift um, away from a chemotherapeutic approach. And we, we're starting to see that, well, we are seeing that in the relapse setting. So the BTK inhibitors are the most important drug in this, in this, in this disease, really. Uh, we know patients do well with frontline chemotherapies. They get good remissions. But at relapse, ibrutinib, where we have the data, clearly is the best, most effective drug. Even in the situation where patients have had very durable responses to their initial chemotherapy, they get even more durable responses with ibrutinib. So that's shifted into first relapse pretty much across the board. In young patients, you can use it as a bridge to an allograft. In older patients, I say it's better than chemotherapy. So, so I think that's happened, well, it has happened. The addition of other drugs to ibrutinib, clearly rituximab improves things. You, you double the CR rate if you give rituximab. You appear to improve progression-free survival. There's only one single center study, so there's no randomized data. There probably won't ever be any. And then the other, of the other drugs that we combined, Venetacax looks, looks very exciting. So the, the only published study, which is from Australia, 24 patients, shows a CR rate of over 60% in some very heavily pretreated patients. And what's very important about that study is that we recognize a subgroup of patients who have P53 mutated disease. They do spectacularly badly with chemotherapy, no matter what chemotherapy you use, we know this. And ibrutinib doesn't work by itself very well either, so that's very much an unmet need. And that combination of ibrutinib with venetoclax appears, at least appears from a small number of patients to overcome that problem. So where do we go next? Well, we start shifting these things front line. Um, that we already have seen some data in very young patients having ibrutinib rituximab, small center study, at MD Anderson, showing very high response rates. That was then followed by high-dose chemotherapy in, the, in, in hypersevad. The question is, do you need that chemotherapy? Uh, my view is you probably don't as we, as we get better at the induction side of things. There's gonna be some data presented in a few hours in elderly patients. A front line, again, looks, looks good from a response point of view, and which is reassuring for me, because we're running that trial in the UK, Brutinib Rituximab front line against our chemo proper randomized trial asking the question, do you need chemotherapy at all? And then the tantalizing prospect of venetoclaxibrutinib, perhaps with an antibody front line. So we've done 12 patient study between myself and my colleague Steve Leguil in France and some French collaborators. Looks highly active. I mean, the data is gonna be at ASH. So the next question is, can you shift that up front and, and do that across the board because if you get patients into a very good MRD negative remission, do you need to do a transplant? Uh, can we stop therapy? I mean, these are the live questions now. So I think over the next few years, you're gonna see a shift away from chemotherapy, traditional chemotherapy, particularly in the elderly patients. I think in younger patients, it's a bit more challenging at the moment because chemotherapy works very well. We get long remissions, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna see a shift. We're also going to see, I believe, using MRD as an endpoint to define some treatment decisions. We've never had treatment decisions to inform with these things, but I think MRD negativity in a young patient might be a reason not to transplant somebody. Uh, that trial's ongoing in the States right now. And then in patients on ibrutinib combinations, we might be thinking about MRD negativity as a point to stop therapy. We need to think about how we stop these things I'm not sure we cure people, but you never know, but stopping and then potentially restarting if, if uh, the disease comes back, that's the way things are moving. So it's an exciting field.